Okay, hopefully we are live. Um, I'm Heidi and I'm going to do a demonstration today on pixie powders um, for Riverside Crafts. Um, I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to... Hi! <laughs> um, I'll give you a few minutes just to get yourselves sorted, sat down with your cup of teas, coffees, whatever. Um, I'm just going to move the camera down so that you can see so here are the two products I'm going to show you that I've made. So I've done quite a few different techniques uh, with the pixie powders. Um, with just this particular one, I've done pixie powders on acetate. So this is raised up this, this acetate and a trick with glue and acetate. I'm not going to say hi to everybody individually, but I'll say hi guys, nice to see you. Um, yeah, so acetate trick with uh, PVA and pixie powders. Um, this one's just been brushed with pixie powders and painting with pixie powders on our little butterfly here. I'm not going to make exactly the same card, I'm going to use the background, I'm going to do the same background, but I'm going to use a different image. Um, just because it takes so long to complete the butterfly. I'm going to show you how I did it. But um, I've got a different image to put on this new card today. And so we're going to do those techniques, definitely. And and then the gift bag to match it, so it's all in the same colours, um, we've got an acetate butterfly, just there. Um, we've got, this is textured card that I've smushed, that's a technical term, I smushed it in the pixie powders and the ribbon as well, squished it, I should say I suppose, squished it in the pixie powders on my mat but you'll see how we did it, it's amazing and these guys, again I smushed them in the pixie powders but I also threw pixie powders on them and sprayed them so I shall show you those as well. And again, like a little sentiment there. Um, use some of the card that I had with the pixie powders on and I mounted it, little sentiment on it. And I also brushed a bit of the pixie powders on it as well with paintbrush. Okay, guys. So hopefully we've got a few people sat there. So we're going to do a card first. And I'm going to put the camera down so you can see. Um, let me turn this around. So I have got my, this is my, um, gosh, this is my, uh, mat that I use and I can't remember what they call it, but it's basically, it's, it's water resistant. Um, and you can just wipe everything off it. It's a bit like a silicone mat, but it's not sticky like a silicone mat is. So I'm using that. Um, I'm using two different stamps today. So I've got um, this one, which is uh, the woodware one, and the peony stamp and the little leaves I'm gonna use. Um, and also the sentiments that I've used on the gift bag and the card. I just showed you that's the little sentiment on there which says what does it say wish you oh, hold on wish you the most beautiful day I had to take my glasses off then to read it but we're going to use that one that's six pound that one the wood woodware one beautiful stamp beautiful beautiful stamp and a lovely sentiment as well and then the other one that I used is this one which is crafters companion and it's part of the set if you saw me do the hair card and the doggy. Um, it's part of that uh, whole set of uh, stamps with all different animals. Um, so this one is the, what do they call this one? Let's see. Dreams Take Flight. How lovely. Dreams Take Flight. Um, four stamps in there again. You've got two sentiment stamps and the side butterfly. So like it's flying away. And then the big picture of the butterfly which is absolutely stunning and I use that as the let me show you the card at the same time so I use that for my stamped image 
in which I painted the butterfly with. And they are $4.99, they're absolutely beautiful. So those are the two stamps that I'm gonna be working with. Okay, and also, I also have a stencil that I'm gonna use. And this is the, oops, this is the stencil. You can just about see it there. It's like a crazy paving. Oops, a daisy. And that is um, a clarity stamp stencil. So clarity stencils, and that's four ninety nine as well. And you'll see more of it when I um, do the technique piece with it. Okay, so let's make a start. So the first thing I did was I took a piece of acetate. You might not be able to see this actually. Um, you can see through it. So you can see. Can you see from the glare? So I took a piece of acetate. Okay, and I took some PVA glue. You'll be able to see it once I start doing this. So just a bit of PVA glue. And if you've got an old, if you've got a, you know, a, an old brush that you use for glue, that's fine. If you've got um, a paint scraper thing or a, a, any type of scraper, I'm just going to use my old Matalan card. And I'm just going to scrape this glue. Oops, a daisy. So it spreads it. Just make sure you get it all over. You don't want really too many spots where it's not. Oops, a daisy. I need to put a little bit more on than that, actually. Just a little bit. Okay. And you might think this is a bit crazy because obviously the thing that activates pixie powders, because they are a powder, is water. But even if you oops a daisy even if you water this down it still works so basically if you normally if you put um pixie powders on acetate they would the water would make them all run off but the glue makes them stick so so i've got some of my pixie powders here now this is this is a pixie powder i keep wanting to call them fairy powders i don't know why but hey ho they're by cosmic shimmer and if that's the same, I think it's probably the same price now. I know I bought mine yonks ago, but I think they're about £3. So it looks as though that's, oops, that's a more recent one. So I think they're about £3, but Caroline will have to let you know if uh, they're any more than that. And I've just talked, so my glue has just dried up on one side. So I'm just going to, and obviously I don't, don't, yours won't dry as quick, guys, because I've got great big hot spotlights on me. So that you can see properly and obviously that's drying my glue really quickly so i'm just gonna add a bit more there we go so that's how you need it and these pixie powders oh my gosh they come in i don't think i've got all of them by far um they come in some amazing colors so let's see what we're going to use on the Colours that I'm using today, I use some different colours from the purpley tones that I did the other day. So let's see if I can use a different variety. Let's do some greeny colours. So I've got spearmint. And basically what you don't want to do is sort of squeeze them and puff them out because you'll get too much of it. it, it and it's quite, they're very, very, very strong colours um, until you water them down. Um, so basically you just want to either tap the end like so however that's a bit restrictive for me so I like to shoot it across so I'm just literally just shooting it across so whatever comes out in the end of the tip comes out um, I can remember I think it was a dabble day once um, our other fabulous card maker Ray <laughs> showed me how to use pixie powders for the first time now that one was pale olive um and this one's peacock green yeah ray showed me how to use them for the first time and she said you know just just give it a little tap and of course being me i squeezed it right across the page nearly died her face was a picture because i just went and squeezed it and so i'm just gonna i've not snipped now <clears throat> for the ends I've snipped these right down. You probably don't need to, but I've snipped mine right down because it stops. Oops. Oh, I've got a bit of orange in there. How have I managed that? 
stop it. What are you doing, silly thing? Let me just um, think I've got a blockage. I'll get my scissor in there. I'll make it even worse. It'll come out loads now. Maybe not then. Oh, that's my peacock. I like that one. Oh, I've got a cocktail stick. Hold on. Let me check. Ah, perfect. Okay. Let's see if I've got anything else that's going to match in with this. What have we got? Oh, emerald green. Let's try this. Do it in the other direction. Okay. Now then, I have to say, I'm not usually a gold person, but I really, really love the um, rich gold on everything. Just, I don't know why, but it just, it, it kind of lifts it for me. So, we we'll sprinkle that on it. Can you see all that massive mess? Right. So, what I've got now is a little spritz bottle. You can use those ones that look like a pen. Um, and it's like a little spritz it, the craft ones that we do. Um, you can use one of those as well. But any spritz bottle, and you want it obviously quite a fine mist. And I'm going to squirt it. Now don't be too afraid of this because if it does get too wet, you can just grab a... Can you see all those colours coming out? I hope you can see them, guys. It looks amazing. So you've got... There was a bit of orange that came through and that's come out as red. Now, my... I've got this on a piece of cardboard underneath just to so I can move it from the table when I'm ready. And what's happening is it's pooling a bit in the middle. Right, let me just grab. Okay, I'm just going to grab my tissue box. Oops, I don't see. Now I should have put these near me. Ouch! So I've got my tissues. Oh, Okay, so all I'm going to do is just drop them on the bit where it's completely flooded it with one particular colour. I really like that. It's beautiful. Okay, now what you can do, if you're not sure of it, if you're not happy with it, you can let it dry and then go back to it again and put more powders over it. Or you can go back and do, let's see, I actually like that ready colour in it. Where have we got? Whoops a daisy. Have I got an orangey one? What's that one? So this one's called Mango Blaze. I'm not sure if this has got red in it, but it's obviously an orangey colour of sorts. Oh, that's nice. Make sure you activate that powder because otherwise what happens is it will dry up and then it will just break off. It um, it will just dry like it. So you can use your tissue again and go in. So if there's any areas that you think, oh, I'm not sure about that, you can just dab away. Okay, and then basically just leave it to dry itself. And in this corner here... I've got a bit where it's not got anything, so... And the reason being is because my sheet's whoops, on an angle. Let me pull it down a little bit. And it's on an angle, so it's it's literally... It's, it's dripping down and... Do you know, I'm going to put some gloves on, guys, because this stuff, I have to say, it does stain your hands. <laughs> when I did it the other day, I had purple hands for about three days, so... Um, you might want to just put some placky gloves, gloves on. Or put your marigolds on if you haven't got any plastic gloves. Just use your marigolds. Cheap enough to get another pair, aren't they? So let's just add... Oh, teal. This is teal wash. Let's put a bit of that in. And I'm going to put... Where are we? We'll put emerald on. Let's put spearmint back in. So I'm just going to put that in the corners as well. And then I'm just going to activate that. Okay, and then literally, you you don't really want to use the heat gun on this to um, dry it out quickly. It's better if you leave it. Um, and perfect. 
leave it to dry naturally just leave it on a flat surface because obviously wherever if you have it on an even surface it's going to run okay and just keep going back to it for the first couple of hours just to make sure it's coming out how you want it so this has got quite black here so i would probably go in and just take some of that out you see so it just lifts that blackness out of it so it's still you know quite an uplifting color okay so i'm just going to move this one out of the way Oops, Okay, so I've got the one that we did, I did earlier, okay? So this is one that I did and it's dried now. And let me just show you, oops, Daisy. There's two sides. So this is the side that it's not been sprinkled on. And this is the side that is. And this side is more, it's, slightly more mattified but it's got the shimmer on it so this is this will really pick up the shimmer so you, you can decide which side this this is more shiny because obviously it's not the side that the, the powders are on but it's stuck to it okay it's not going to come off um and this is what i used for the backing of my card so i'm just going to now then where do i put my card that would be a help, wouldn't it? Okay. So, I'm going to make it slightly... Let's do it. Let's do it that way. Okay. So, I've just got my, my guillotine. I'm not one for using measurements very often. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to cut it down there. Oops, I don't say. So I'm just going to put that on there. Now, I didn't want it to be flat on my piece because I like having the lights behind it. So what I used was my Kalal glue, which is um, a silicone, oops, a silicone glue, and ah. Uh, I haven't got the price on it. Perhaps Caroline can let you know. But it's literally like a silicone based glue. And all I use is, now you've got a choice now to, to decide whether you want to put the shimmery side upwards or the shiny side. And I think I'm gonna use the shiny side this time. On the last one, I actually used the shimmery side. So you can, you can decide whichever you want. Actually, I will use the shimmery side. So I'm just going to put a little blob of, and the good thing about this is that it dries virtually clear, but also it gives you a little bit of lift on the card. So you've got that little bit of light behind it. Um, let's just put another little bit there and there. So the other option to give it a little bit of height would be to put um, would be to put um, oops the uh, what's it pads you know the the foam pads that have got a little bit of height on them but that would be noticeable behind it so I've put that on so we've got we've got our our base for our card okay now the next thing whoops that whoops a daisy the next thing that I did was I used the I'm gonna just get my stamp mat out and let's get my butterfly to show you so I took the butterfly stamp and a piece of white card and I used a for this I used um because I was going to paint it 
I used a watercolour card. I'm not sure which one it is, but it was a watercolour card because I knew that I was going to be adding water to my pixie powders. So let's put some stays on. on. I love the smell of this. Marzipan. <laughs> smells gorgeous. Okay, and I always use a stamp press because I'm absolutely rubbish. Before I got this, I used to be scared of stamping because I was absolutely rubbish at it. Oh, bananas. Just goes to show, I still am. <laughs> nice thing about this is you can go back in. Okay, that's clear enough for me, guys. It's enough to paint on anyway. Right, let's get rid of this. Okay, so let's turn it around for you. So, what I did with this, and this is the actual, um, is, this is the actual, uh, what are they called? Palette that I um, used to actually paint my, this butterfly here. Okay, and all I did, I poured powder now I've just got water on my brush here okay and I tip some powder into my palette and made it into a paint now if I just show you and this is to show you that you can actually just reactivate it okay so don't waste if you're going to paint with it, just let it dry out. Um, if there's, especially if there's a fair bit left, which there was when I painted mine, um, it was, you know, just it's so relaxing to do. I have to say, but I didn't want to spend the whole of this demo showing you how to paint because I'm sure you just don't need that. Okay, but it is gorgeous to do, and let's just show you. I'll show you one from scratch that you can, I think I've just put paint on myself, but never mind. I think this is to wash, actually, I've already got that one. Let me use another colour. Uh, let's use lava red. Okay, so all I'm going to do is just tip a little bit. And obviously, if you, if you put your brush in or you put too much water in, just add a bit more powder. Okay. so you can see it really works out nice and just just use your brush just to make sure the powders kind of squished down and, and starts to it's saturated so that you know you don't end up with sort of bits of powder it's all saturated kind of like mixing in your flour in your in your bacon you know you want to make sure all the flours sort of completely mixed in this color is beautiful so you can see and you can make it as intense as you want so if you want it you know slightly less than this so not so dark you know you can taper it out by using not, not so much water but you can also mix your colors together so let's try oops, some of this red in the gold and you can mix your colours together as well. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, lovely. It's like a pinky gold. In fact, it looks a bit like a bronze. That's gorgeous. But you can see how strong these colours are. It's absolutely amazing. It's I've really enjoyed doing this because it's just so clever. Right. So that's how I did my... Oops, sorry, guys. That's how I did my... Um, my... Oops, think of the word, butterfly. Okay, so what I did, I've prepped. Um, I've used the um, peony stamp. And you can see I've just painted it in one colour only because I don't want to spend 10 hours painting my butterfly for you. Um, and all I did was I fussy cut it. Now, I'm really rubbish at fussy cutting. And 
anyone that does it really beautifully, you'll be able to see that from mine because it's rubbish. Um, but what, how I get round this, because when I fussy cut, um, usually the edges show up white because I can't get it neat enough. So what I used was a Pigma pen in black and I just hold it very still and run my pen round the edges once I finish cutting it, okay? And literally gives it a better, more professional finish because it looks as though you've got cut right up to the edges, you know, and and it just, it just makes it, finishes it for me. It makes it look professional. And also what I did was I took my, oops, I've got, a, I know I've got a leaf here as well that I need to do. Where is it? There it is. So I just use one colour of pixie powders for these. I use the um, candy pink for the flower. So she's got candy pink and the leaves are done with emerald green. So again, I just went round the edges of the leaves to make them stand out. And I also used um, Micron Pen to follow the lines that were stamped because when you paint over it, obviously being shimmery, um, it really wipes out all the lines on the inside of the stamp. Um, and if you're like me and can't stay inside the lines and you go over them, then you lose them. So I went over them with the um, Micron pen. And then also for the leaves, I went over the veins. So I, I remarked the veins in, okay? so. I'm going to put this together with my, so I've got my, this one, so I'm going to use, now I want a bit of height on my peony as well, but I'm going to use um, foam pads on this, so I'm just going to put some foam pads on the back of it, so it gives it a little bit of, oops, I don't know, say, a little bit of height. And let's remove those. Okay. So I'll do it so it's the right way up for you. How shall we do it? We do it like that. Okay, so there's your peony. And then the little leaves, I'm just going to use my scissors just to shape them a little bit. So I'm just using the edge of my scissors, not open, just flat, to shape my little leaves. I just love the way they're so shimmery. I mean, these have looked stunning on um, the new stamps that we've got, the little... Um, what they're called, gnomes, the little gnomes stamps and the mushrooms and stuff. Oh, <laughs> it flew away. So I'm just going to grab some glue. Now, I'm just going to turn it around for a second because I can't work upside down putting these leaves in. I'm terrible. In fact, I'm just going to use a bit of my oops, silicone glue to pop my leaves oops, under around the edges. So let's... Let's pop one there. No, I need a bit more than that. Ah, ah, ah. There's one. Okay. Second one. Let's do three on this side. Let's use that one. There we go. And then a couple on the side there. So number one. Uh, 
really, really enjoyed working with these pixie powders. They are so much fun, guys. Oops, Daisy. There we go. Let's get this glue off my fingers. So let's turn it around for you. So there's my card, and then I just put my um, my little. Uh, where is it? I have got one actually. So this is my little sentiment that I cut out. I cut it with a, um, one of my dies that I've had for a long time. Now, where did I just put? Oh, there it is. Let me just grab my. So what I did do with this was I used my, whoops. Let's clean my brush off. There's a fresh one. Um, I used, I'm just going to grab the gold from here because I've already coloured my main gold. But I'm just going to use it to just dry brush kind of, virtually. It's kind of nearly dry brushing really. You just don't want a lot. On the other one that I did, um, on the little uh, sentiment, I just sort of brushed it round the edges so that it was just like framing it. Okay, so there's my sentiment and let's get a couple of foam pads. Where did I put those? I don't like cards that take forever. I like cards that are really quick. So let's. Oops, I've made that a bit wonky, haven't I? There you go. There you go, guys. So that was the card one. Now, I did use the acetate with the. Um, uh, with the pixie powders on it for another thing so I did use it to let me grab my little die <coughs> so I used it to cut out my little this was for my gift bag so I'm just gonna pop I'm going to use a bit of masking tape just to hold the die down. Let's pop it through. Oops, the daisy. So, we have got. So, normally I would cut two out of these for my bag, but I. I've only got a small piece of acetate with this one. So, oops a daisy, I've only got one this time, but I would normally do two and stack them up. So I'm just gonna put that to one side for our bag. Okay, now, what we did do on our bag, this is the exciting bit, is we did the ribbon, this piece of card on the side, and the piece of card that went behind the sentiment and we did our can you see that we did our flowers too so does get a bit messier from here on in however if you wear your gloves you'll be fine and it does i mean if you've got your central heating on like i have it, it they do dry up oh, i've put my gloves on the wrong way Oops, Daisy. There we go. Um, if you've got the central heating on in your house, like I have, then your pixie powders will dry up quite quickly. Okay, so I've got my brown mat. Um, perhaps Caroline can tell you all what it's called because I can't remember. 
and I'm going to take some of my oops pixie powders. So let's have a look at some of these gorgeous colours. I have got. Well, I always love teal teal wash. I'm just going to sp spackle it all over my my mat. Looks horrendous, I know, but you'll see the point. Okay, let's put a bit of pale olive. And oh, we've got to have a bit of gold in it because I do love my gold. Okay. And on the last one, I used a uh, candy pink, which is a nice one. Okay. Just don't sneeze when you're doing this. Okay, right, I've got, what else do I want to use on it? Peacock green. And I've got another one called, where is it? Where's aubergine? I have got another one called aubergine. I can't see it. Where are you? Oh, I have mis misappropriated. Oh, there it is, aubergine dream. There it is. It's very um, funny. When you look at the colors that come out, the powders, um, the the actual effects that you get with the colours is completely different. So they're all made up of mica powder and shimmers, you know, when you activate them, each one is made up of loads of different colours. So it's not just going to be like red, it's going to be red with a hint of this and a hint of that and a hint of the other. So you, you really don't get just a pure colour. So I'm just going to use my spritz bottle and give them a big old spritz so it activates all that powder and once again with this if you're doing this and you know you have to pack it up or go leave it just leave it to dry and you can go back to it, reactivate it, and then add some more powders and things like that. So what I did to get my coloured card was I took some card, and again, watercolour card, because obviously it's going to get quite wet. If you use ordinary card, it's going to bend quite a lot, um, whereas the watercolour card obviously can take quite a bit of water with it. So I'm just going to pop it down and just tap on it, and then lift it up to have a look where you're inks come on it okay so then you can put it down again and fill up any spaces okay and the same as when you when i was doing it before on the um on the acetate if there are elements that you're not so sure of you can go back into it and add a bit more of certain colours, um, you can you can add more colour to your mat and, and re reactivate with water, so I'm just popping some more colours on here. Now you do get this um, bowing of the paper and it's entirely up to you, some people like the effect of that when it's full of water and you know all the um, pigments are, are sort of running down the sides and stuff you may not like that if you don't just wait wait your paper down to dry or you can tape it to a piece of board or something like that so that it stops it from running so you can get so many different techniques with this so I'm going to move that and let that dry I'm just going to put it onto a piece of scrap card and then we've still got this gorgeousness on my mat and so I'm going to add some more colours down on my mat because this is because the water has joined together on some of them we've got a lot of this dark purple through the edges 
so around this bit here and around this bit here where I haven't sort of smudged it all together you've still got individual colours which is brilliant and I am going to use those up as well as the centre so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my flowers which originally were white and I, I bought these from oh, let's put some gold in there reactivate some gold um, I bought the flowers from the shop and I can't remember there's a lot in a pack which is great um, I can't remember exactly how much they were and how many was in a pack so I'm sure Caroline can you remind you um, and they are these these flowers they're paper flowers and I did three of them for each colour that I did. So um, basically what you can do is, you can do it in two ways actually. So I smushed my flowers around the mat, picking up colour as I went. So some on the underneath as well. Um, and then, and with this you can obviously be a bit more selective because you can you can pick up some of these colours from around the outside. So if it's missing a slight colour, you can select it from this. Okay, so I'm just going to put that there. And grab the next one. And you just want to, I do do some of the bits underneath as well. I pull that colour out and it's absolutely stunning. You can add more water if you need it. You can add more colour with the powders. So, I just keep going round, picking up bits of colour. The shimmer on these is gorgeous. I love the multicolours and the way that you can use the same colours, you know, on your card. You can use it on your flowers so you get this mix and match effect. Um, and then you can do, obviously, you can do your gift bag as well. Or... It doesn't have to be a gift bag, it could be a tag, and then you use wrapping paper, so it's entirely up to you. Another thing you can do is I thought, oh, I'm not getting much on the inside, so I just used my finger, picked, picked up some of it on my finger, and used my finger to get some of the colour on the inside of it. Okay, so then I'm going to put that one down. Now, I'm going to show you, this is the other technique that you can use. Tissue to get some of that off my fingers. Um, I'm going to use emerald green. So I'm going to spray or drop powder over my flower. And where's my beautiful gold? Gold, gold, rich gold. A sprinkle of that. And where's my candy pink? I mean, you can do it with just one colour if you wanted to. So the other thing you could do is you could take your flower and you could paint it using using your um, paintbrush and just adding water to shimmer powders in your palette. So that's another way of doing it. But this way, you're just going to spray. I think these look absolutely gorgeous. And particularly the darker colours are really, really good for like steampunk and mixed media. Um... You know, if you want to do, um, oops, 3D stuff. So if you're, you know, if you're making a box and you want to put some flowers on the top of it, it's just, I just think you can grab out so many beautiful colours with these pixie powders that, you know, the world is your oyster, really. So you've got, you know, these gorgeous flowers that are made with the pixie powders. So you can see them there. I don't know whether you can see all the shimmer on them, but they are absolutely... Let me turn that one round for you. It's just absolutely stunning. So that's how I did my flowers. Okay. Now, the last bit is I did... Now, where's that gone? I've lost it. I keep losing everything. Ah, so the ribbon. I used, I think cotton's probably the best because it's um, so absorbent, but I used a bit of lace this time and I used 
my pixie powders that were on my mats. In the first instance, because they, they are obviously, I don't want to waste them. And if you pull them around a bit, sometimes it pulls out some of the other colours. It can, once, once you've sort of smooched it around a lot, you can end up with it getting quite dark, because obviously some of the pigments are quite dark in colour. Um, and if that happens and you're not liking it, then just turn your ribbon over. Okay, I'm just going to do it on a section of it. But you can pull it out and, again, just apply directly to your ribbon. Let's get another one. So there's so many possibilities with it because there's so many different ways of using this and I'm pretty sure that you know these techniques that I'm doing I'm pretty sure that there are you know lots of other ways to do this so I'm just soaking it with with my water from my spray and again I would just leave it to dry okay so the last thing I'm just going to show you quickly and I didn't do this on a card um is the stencil so i've got this stencil yes i've just put my fingers all over it so i've got a stencil and basically i've attached it to a piece of card um watercolor card okay and i've just put um masking tape all around the edges just to hold it in place and i'm just literally going to put it face down on my mat and smush it Okay, cool. So some of the areas are going to get paint through them, some won't, that's cool. It's just some form of, oh it's wicked. Um, Again, you can use this as a backing paper for your matting and layering on your cards. So you can use it as a backing paper for that. Wow. And just keep going back at it. And if you want to, you can add, you know, some more, some more colours to your mat with your, with your powders. Um, and you can, whoops a daisy. And you can do that. Now then, I would just leave it as it is, let it dry. Um, the powders, uh, they do stain a little bit, but you can remove, you know, most of it off. So I would leave it to dry before removing the stencil. And if you want to, because you feel like there's not enough paint on them because, the, you know, it's, it's, it's in patches, if you don't like it, just use your finger just to blob a bit of the colours you know, into the spaces if that's what you want to do. You know, you don't have to leave it like that if you don't want. I kind of like the fact that it's, you know, a bit organic and it's uh, totally random, you know. So I kind of like that effect. It's really, really cool. I love that idea. Um, so that is another idea for that one. Okay, let's move this. So, we've got all our elements shown how to make them. So, I've got card here that I've smushed in, in the pink effect that I did. Okay, and I've got my little, my little butterfly here that I cut out of my acetate. Actually, I like her that way more. Let's turn her that way. So I'm just basically squishing her down so that her body stays on the surface of the card. Can you see it? So the body stays on the surface of the card, but her wings are, are raised up. Right, so let's do our, oops, gift bag. So I've got my gift bag over here. Let's cut a section of this for the edge right, we don't need it that long certainly not ok 
Okay, and it's up to you, obviously, how thick you do it or how thin you do it, how long you do it. You can do it as you like. Okay, so I'm going to put this down this side here. And where's my glue? I'm just going to use my PVA. Well, it's actually book binding glue because I love this stuff. Um, by Pin Flare. Okay, it does dry clear, so don't worry if it squishes out. Let's just hold it down a second. Okay, so the other thing I've got is my flowers. So I'm just going to blob some glue. Actually, I should use the other one so they stick on quickly. Let's use my silicone glue. Colours on these are absolutely stunning. They're just so yummy. Okay, so there's my flower flowers done. Oh, where's my and this one I did my lace here. So it's got two sides to it, but it's it's kind of the same colour. So I'm just going to, oops, a daisy, tie it in a little knot. And yes, you will get a little bit flaking off it because it sometimes the plant, the, the powder dries like that. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom just to hold it straight. And you could do this with, I mean, you can do it with the silk ribbons as well. It, it wouldn't make any difference. So there's our gift bag. And then we're just going to pop the butterfly down. A bit of glue down the centre of her body. And just to add a little bit of interest, I've got, let's move those. I have got these little stick on pearls so they're flat back with a little plastic well self-adhesive um little whoops bit on the back and this is why i didn't do any painting today because i'm having a shaking day but <laughs> oh dear okay let me just put a few down the centre of her body. I mean, you can do... I've done it purple, but you could do them in gold and or pick out one of the other... Where is it gone? Pick up, pick out one of the other colours that's, that's in this. I mean, there's blues in this. There's all sorts. Okay, mine are not going really straight today. Let's put one more on. Can't bear to make you wait any longer. <laughs> won't go on. <laughs> I stuck to my finger. Oh, crikey. Okay. Oh, please stick down. It really doesn't like me today. There we go. So, three stuck. Oh, wow. You just move again. Okay. So, we've got our gift bag, and you can put a little uh, sentiment on it if you want to, or you can just write, you know, with a, a Sharpie or what have you, or a coloured coloured uh, gel pen or something like that, and you've got your little, your little gift bag. So, let's turn the camera up. Oh my gosh, guys. So, I hope that you enjoyed the gift bag and the peony card okay and the beautiful butterfly and don't forget when you're fussy cutting if you can't get it perfect do that black line around the edges and it makes it look much much better 
because you won't have any little white bits. And here's my other one. Okay. So, I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm going to take photographs of the blue collection one that I did, um, the first lot I showed you, and then I'll do um, photographs of these two as well that I made. And, oh my gosh, I've just lost one of the pearls off it again. Um, I'll take photographs of those as well for you. And if I make up anything with the pieces that I've done today, I'll add those to the uh, comments at some point as well. So thank you so much for watching. And I'm really sorry that my hands were a bit shaky. They sometimes are, I can't help it. <laughs> um, but I've really enjoyed doing it. I, I hope you've enjoyed watching it, but thank you. And I uh, hope to see you soon, guys. Thank you very much.